it is now official. Boxing is on that BS. Jamel Charlo doesn't seem to be able to crack the pound for pound list according to the big boxes like ESPN. And this is a gross injustice we're going to talk about. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Now, I'm going to jump right into the content. And I feel like Roy Jones right now. Y'all must have forgot. I spent a lot of my time covering Jamel and Jamal Charlo's like fights. I went to several fights. I was there live. And it's been a fun journey seeing them progress as men, as fighters, the maturation of the Charlo brothers, going from relatively unknown to the big leagues, you know, having their first pay-per-view earlier this year in a pandemic year. But there's a gross injustice going on right now in front of all your eyes. And it seems like the big box old media, they don't seem to recognize the Charlo brothers and put them on the pound for pound list. So I had to put together this video because y'all must have forgot. You know, I'm going to focus this one mostly on Jermail Charlo, who is a unified champion at 154. And it goes without saying he is the best 154 pounder. He is the guy, he does have a loss, but that loss is debatable. Some people think he shouldn't have never lost. So realistically, you know, depending on who you ask, he could be undefeated. Now, I'm going to have to take you down the boxing ego timeline. So this is a fight I covered May 21st, 2016. You guys see it on the screen. This is Jermail Charlo when he first won the title. And we're going to look at his journey since that point. He won the WBC title. I thought he was losing this fight. And that was against John Jackson, son of Julian Jackson, right? And it was overall a great performance by Charlo because he was able to turn things in his favor and get the stoppage. And, and was it a stoppage? It was a violent stoppage. You see him, he caught him with the hook. And this is how you know it's a, a bad stoppage when the opponent is so hurt that they turn their back from the punch and almost like, it's like a defense mechanism. Your body's naturally, you're so rocked and so hurt, you're trying to protect yourself. Everybody, unless you have something, you know, 5150, you're hard programming and hardwired to protect yourself and, you know, recognize pain. And that's what happened. Caught him with a brilliant hook. And then after that, you know, you see these pictures. After that, it was murder, she wrote, and he got the stoppage. Next, Jermail Charlo fought a Texas native, and there was some real bad blood. That was April 22nd, 2017. This was his next fight. So his next fight was taking care of um, a rival in Charles Hatley, who was a really a Texas native, and the two had bad blood. And as you guys can see from these pictures, it didn't end well for Charles Hatley. Charles Hatley was brutally knocked out in this fight. This is another fight that I was there for. It was at the Barclay Center. And it was a brutal, brutal knockout from Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo, I think this is what helped the Charlo brand get a lot of publicity when it comes to and get popular in Brooklyn because they were stretching guys, both Jamel and Jamal Charlo. And this was a nasty knockout. I can't show you, obviously, for copyright reasons, but take my word for it it was a nasty knockout he caught him um i thought jamel was doing well in the fight but shortly after this is the final scene boom you never know you never know now jamel charlo off the back of the charles hatley mandatory where he destroyed a guy like charles hatley bad blood it was an intense insane buildup. charles hatley had a record of 26 one and one he fought yet another mandatory, a rising Southpaw trash talking prospect who's still relevant in the division now. This was October 14, 2017, and it was the infamous fight with Erickson Lubin. And you guys will see that. First round, KO Jermail Charlo. Yeah, I mean, it was it was like it was a hook uppercut that Jamel threw early 
caught Erickson Lubin early. Erickson Lubin was showing a lot of promise. He had beat a mutual opponent that later fought Jamel Charlo and Jorge Cota. And Erickson Lubin was supposed to be a hot shot prospect, 18 and 0, Southpaw with power. Jamel derailed everything. First round knockout. If you look at this knockout, this knockout is very eerily similar to Mike Tyson versus Spinks. Just the way the shot landed and the way they fell and everything. Great knockout. And once again, Jamel Charlo rose to the occasion. This was another mandatory, just like Charles Hatley. And it was also a guy where there was mounting tension. And you could tell that the two didn't like each other. Erickson Lubin was talking the talk, but ultimately it was Jamel Charlo that walked the walk. You see, keep running your mouth, keep running your mouth. Yeah, Ace Town, you know, crazy picture. And the picture speaks for itself. KO. And I know Jamel Charlo was like, man, I right, keep running your mouth. It was so bad that after this fight, after this particular fight, there was like a commotion in the crowd. And I don't know if it was the rival team or whatever the situation was, but they start throwing chairs. And one of the chairs allegedly hit Jamal, his brother, because his brother was probably hyped that Jamel crushed Erickson Lubin like that. And I remember the infamous words they, they brought Maul into the ring and they said, hey, we seen, you know, you got hit with a chair or whatnot. Are you good? And he's like, I'm good. Is he OK? <laughs> and the reason he said that is because that crazy knockout. So the legend of the Charlo brothers continue to grow. You guys see these these photos that I'm showing you. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Next in June of 2018, June 9th, you had Jamel Charlo, who faced off against Austin Trout, who had fought his brother, Big Charlo, Jamal Charlo, and he went the distance. In this fight, this was a good fight. I thought Charlo pulled away. And, you know, Austin Trout is a guy who, who's beaten Miguel Cotto, fought everybody you know he fought Canelo stuff like that and Charlo was able to win via majority decision you know so this was that was two back-to-back -back fights the Charles Hatley and the Lubin fight back-to-back -back knockouts at the Barclay and then the Austin Trout fight was at the Staples Center so they started moving Charlo around and you know he was showing the potential and, and people were checking for his fights in different in different arenas you know he, they didn't just build him where he's from in h-town only they start moving him around now comes the next fight december 22nd 2018 this is yet another fight that i covered and this was jamel charlo fighting a 27 and 2 tony harrison back at the barclay center and this was the first fight under the new pbc deal with fox and you guys see right there on the screen. So this was a big deal. And they chose the Charlo brothers, Jamel and Jamal, to fight on Fox Network TV under this new PBC deal. And it was a very good fight. It was a very good fight. The outcome was controversial. It had both Charlos on this card. Again, I was in New York for this particular fight. It was at the Barclays Center in 2018 it was right around christmas time just just like at the time of uploading this video it was like the week of christmas the 22nd and tony harrison is a guy who has always showed a lot of promise you know he comes from detroit he has a level of slickness but he also has power a lot of people sleep on tony harrison's power but he has almost a 70 percent knockout ratio 67 and change and he's a dangerous guy. He's been in there with Ishe Smith. He fought Jared Hurd. He was beating Jared Hurd. And he was beating Willie Nelson. But those guys have power and they end up catching him. So he had tasted defeat before. And he was fighting Charlo. He gave it a, a good go. Some people had Tony Harrison winning. I got to really watch that fight because I watched it live. And I don't remember going back and watching it. So it's, it's a close fight. I remember post-fight, Jamel even started crying because he felt he doesn't like to lose 
and he felt he got robbed in that fight. And a lot of people agree with that. I, I me personally, I keep it real on my channel. Um, I think I had Tony Harrison slightly winning, but it was very close. So it really could have went either way. But nonetheless, this is Jermel Charlo's pedigree. This is who he's fighting. Some fights are going to be tougher than the than the next. How is this dude not on the pound for pound list? Then after the Tony Harrison fight in June of 2019 june 23rd 2019 he was supposed to fight tony harrison they even had a press conference and everything it was a it was a lit press conference too but tony harrison pulled out with um an injury he claimed injury so they brought in a substitute opponent jorge cota right and i was at that fight it was again supposed to be tony harrison part two harrison pulled out with injury so as a result they brought in Jorge Cota. And as you guys will be able to see on the screen, it didn't end well for your boy Jorge Cota at all. Crucified. Got bodied. Knocked out. Murder, she wrote. This was a brilliant knockout by Jamel Charlo. Great stuff. He, he wanted Tony Harrison... He couldn't get Tony Harrison. So this is what he did to the man. I mean, just look at this picture, bro. Look at this picture. Destroyed him. And I can't fault him. He was supposed to, he was literally supposed to fight Tony Harrison, but he pulled out with the injury. So he had to fight a substitute opponent. I went to the fight. It was cool. And he destroyed him. End of story. You know, end of story. After that, he did fight Tony Harrison next. So late sub Jorge Cota got evaporated. He got absolutely destroyed. You guys see like he was asleep with his eyes open. Very reminiscent of Canelo versus Amir Khan. I mean, just look. Look at your boy, bro. He looked like he on a roller coaster ride or something. Now, keep in mind, Jorge Cota later fought a top rated guy in the division after this brutal knockout from Charlo. And that was a bigger uh, corn Thomas Lamana, a.k.a. Cornflake. And he beat him by stoppage. And this was supposed to be a top prospect who was bigger than Jorge Cota. So he's still a, he's a good fighter because Charlo destroyed him, as I just showed you. You know, he got destroyed by Charlo, but then he bounces back with this performance against a top rated prospect. But right after the Cota fight, which, again, was no fault of Charlo's, he had to fight somebody because Tony Harrison was um, injured was the Tony Harrison rematch. I also went to this fight, and you guys see, Charlo was getting busy, you know? I think Tony Harrison started off boxing well, but he got dropped multiple times throughout the fight. I think Jake or Jack Reese had a blunder because after the second knockdown, when, or I, actually, I think it was after the first knockdown, basically, Jack Reese should have stopped the fight. You know, he allowed it to continue and Charlo was out there celebrating and he thought he had won the fight because he was destroying him and Jack Reese allowed it to happen. So I think it was the second knock knockdown. He let he let Tony Harrison in the rematch for some reason continue. And as you guys see, his head was getting rocked up and bopped up. And I thought that was stupid for Jack Reese. You know, Jack Reese had the wilder situation where, you know, the outcome was was sketch. Like, why'd you let Tyson Fury beat the count with a long count? Stuff like that. And I thought he met, made a mistake in the Logan Paul KSI rematch. He didn't give credit for knockdowns and stuff like that. And I thought he made a mistake in this fight because Charlo really should have had a TKO right after this. He literally landed like four uppercuts in a row and his head was rocking up. Anytime that happens, the guy's not responding. Um, you should probably wrap it up. And, and the thing is, Jack Reese allowed him to continue for some odd reason after that particular sequence. And then he stopped it in a very weird spot. So we're just going through the body of work of Jamel Charlo. Make sure you smash the like button. That was a great win. Redemption. He, he proved without a doubt that he could beat Tony Harrison because he did it by stoppage. Now, the most recent Charlo fight was a unification with Jason Rosario. But before I move on to that, we have to talk about the aspect that Jason Rosario was coming off the performance of a lifetime 
beating at home in Philadelphia, beating J-Rock, who had just beat at home Swift Jared Hurd and looked phenomenal. So this was a huge win for Banana Jason Rosario to beat Jason, um, for Jason Rosario to beat J-Rock. He was dropping him. He was hurting him. He looked good out there. He looked real good. And he looked extremely dangerous. He looked like he was bigger than Charlo. He looked like he was bigger than J-Rock. And he, he stopped J-Rock at home in Philly, which was expected, was a expected, you know, feel good fight based on how good J-Rock looked versus Jared Hurd. But it was much more than he bargained for. And then now J-Rock switches trainer and has not been back since. Like, he, you know, he's rebuilding. I think he's working in the Kronk gym or whatnot. And this dangerous guy, that's who Jamel Charlo decided to fight next off of the heels of that. So let me recap. You have Julian J-Rock Williams, who was the underdog versus the much bigger Swift Jared Hurd, who had a win over Edislani Lada and Tony Harrison and, and is the only person to stop Austin Trout, if I'm not mistaken. And Hurd at home gets beat by J-Rock. And then J-Rock fights this Jason Rosario and people think he's going to do good in the fight. And it's a super tough fight. I only gave J-Rock, I think, the first round. And then it, the second, third, the fight started to get away from him. And he got stopped and he was badly rocked and badly concussed and badly hurt at home. And then that's who Jermail Charlo fights next. And this is what Jermail Charlo does to him. You know, by the fight's end, he knocked him down a gang of times. I think it was three. Um, knocked him down a, a couple times. And Rosario was coming to win. He looked good early in the fight. But it was no match for the skill set of Jamel Charlo. Knocked him down. And it looked like Jason Rosario was having a baby or something. Like he was having contractions. It was a scary knockout at the hands of Jamel Charlo. And Jamel Charlo, he you know, he looked sensational. It looked real bad for Jason Rosario by the end of that fight. He looked like he was convulsing on the ground. I've never seen a knockout in real time, like where I watched it live, that looked quite like that. The man was convulsing on the ground and his stomach was having contractions or something like he was in the third trimester. I don't know what happened, but I guess the punch, the timing, you know, this is an extremely dangerous guy in Jason Rosario. You can't tell me after all I went through the actual timeline of Jermail Charlo and his body of work that this is not pound for pound greatness right now in this modern era of boxing. The ESPN list, they got Gennady Golovkin, who looked horrible, versus Derenchenko, who Jamal Charlo actually beat. And I'll probably make a separate video about Jamal Charlo. I had to get the, the Jamal one off, you know. But it's just disrespectful. And a lot of these lists, they don't want to put, it's like they don't want to put too many black fighters on it. And we're just going to call it out like we see it. You know, Jamel Charlo should be on everybody's top 10 pound for pound list. Love the guy, hate the guy. His performances are speaking volumes. He he talks and he trash talks. Keep running your own mouth, keep running. But it don't matter when you can back it up. You know, great guys like Roy Jones, Floyd Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, they talk, but they can back it up. It don't matter if you can back it up. The man has a great record, and Jermel Charlo is being vastly disrespected in the world of boxing right now, and you're hearing it first from your boy, Boxer Ego. The man is 34-1, and 1, 18 knockouts. He's always counted out, and people think, oh, Erickson Lubin got your number, dangerous southpaw, Jason Rosario's big and scary, and he keeps showing up. Tony Harrison beat you in the first fight. I'm just going off of what people are saying. Tony Harrison beat you in the first fight. He's going to outbox you again. He gets stopped. You know, you're not ready for John Jackson. You're not ready for a title shot. You and your brother are overrated. These dudes keep showing up. And for boxing to not get it right, you got a unified champion. He got the ring belt. He got all the belts at the division. The only guy remaining with the belt is Patrick Texaria. And I don't know one person on this planet that believes Patrick Texaria would beat Jermail Charlo and would put, you know, money down on that. If anybody wants to take that bet, we can bet some racks. We'll bet Rex. What you want to bet? Ten thousand? I'll bet ten thousand. If the fight happens next, Jermel Charlo would dog him. You know, there's no reason this man should be getting disrespected by not being put on the list. And you got guys like Usyk 
Usyk is a solid fighter. Usyk did not look great versus Derek Chisora. Usyk did not look good versus Chaz Tablespoon or whatever. How is he on the list so high up? But Jamel and Jamal can't even make the list. It's all cap. You know, we speak in Snapple facts. They speak in all cap. Stop playing. Put Jamel on that list. Hey, I can't even. It's like you don't got the Charlo brothers, not one or both on the list. I almost can't respect your list. Let me know how I did in this video. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Get that boy his respect. Like it or not, Lions only, they, they doing what they need to. Peace. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.